Frogs are sensitive creatures. They need clean water to live. Underground coal mining delivers a double whammy to frogs. It cracks up the ground, draining away the water where frogs and tadpoles live, and later that water re-emerges polluted. In the Sydney water catchment, we have three species of endangered frogs that are affected by the impacts of coal mining. We've got the giant burrowing frog, we've got the red crown toadlet, and little John's tree frog. We're going to have a look now at some natural environments to see how the frogs might be affected by the impacts of underground coal mining. Okay, so we're uh, standing in an upland swamp. We can't show you the swamps inside the special areas because there's a, uh, a fine for people that wander in there. But we're in the Royal National Park. We're on the Warrenora Plateau. The vegetation is very similar. The swamp has been formed in ancient geological time and it's here because it's a waterproof impervious basin that holds sediment and holds water and that means the vegetation here is quite different to the surrounding bush. So around us we've got some heathland with some trees in it and on the edge we've got a cyperoid heathland with uh, swamp banks here and further in we've got the ferns. The thing about these swamps is that they hold water over long periods of time so they're like a big sponge that releases water through a nick point down the bottom and out that nick point water might run year round and that water is very important to animal communities that live in the swamp but also around the swamp with underground mining you can break up this basin and it will start to leak but the water will stop coming out the nick point it'll start going through the cracks down into the ground and that will disrupt the ecology of all those animals that have evolved here for millions of years and have become dependent on this particular upland swamp ecology. So we're standing in Red Bank Creek. This is a reasonably steep valley and Red Bank Creek is a tributary that drains into the Nepean River. And under our feet, about four to five hundred metres below, Longwall coal mining has passed under, um, backwards and forwards, taking out about to two and a half metres of coal. And the whole landscape afterwards drops, that the sandstone has shattered. And it's shattered here in quite a dramatic way. As it goes through these cracks from the subsidence, it dissolves metals, chews up oxygen, and then it's hitting the surface, and it's grabbing the oxygen from atmospheric air, and that's why we're getting this um, precipitate falling, forming. So that's, again, oxides of metals mixed up with algae. So we're here on a rock platform a couple of days after some really heavy rain and all around us little rock pools have appeared and already the common eastern froglets have been out making the most of these very temporary conditions. They'll make their way to a very small shallow pond with some sticks and then they'll lay their eggs on those sticks underwater and in time, in a short amount of time, tadpoles will hatch out. A lot of still water here and there's tadpoles, very tiny tadpoles. A female yep. and there's another male all different colours, and here are the eggs, tiny little eggs. There's people home. The water collects on the track and the common eastern froglets are able to utilise the temporary water to lay tatties and get on with things. But here is a naturally occurring nick point. This is where the swamp releases its water over this rock shelf through the course of thousands of years of erosion little potholes open up into the rock they're presumably made by rocks being swirled around inside a hole that just gets bigger and bigger so they form these basins that can endure for months with water in them the giant burrowing frog tadpoles can be found in these kind of holes so the water that sits in the upland swamp makes its way out of here 
over the months. It's like a big sponge releasing this water to these pools. If you crack the upland swamps, the rate of water coming out of there will slow down. There'll be less water in these pools. There won't be enough time for the tadpoles to reach maturity. And if the tadpoles don't have enough time underwater, they won't turn into frogs and there will be no more giant burrowing frogs. That is what is called a local extinction.